Today, we're gonna try and game on the cheapest computer that you can buy at a Best Buy. Now, if you're the lucky owner of a crisp 160-ish dollar bill, you can walk into a Best Buy and choose between two laptops. Um, I think laptop is maybe a bit of a grandiose term for what these are. Chromebook is, is definitely more accurate. But you can choose between an 11-inch device that has a Celeron N4000 in it, what a beast, or a 15-inch device that comes with a Celeron N3340 in it. Uh, so you can either get a smaller, slightly faster device, or a bigger, slightly slower device. And considering that we're going to try and game on it today, I went with the small, slightly faster one. So let's take it out of its box, open it up, and then prod around on its insides a bit, and then we'll see if it can game. But before then, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor, Linode. Today's video is sponsored by Linode, which is a powerful and easy to use Linux based web hosting service that's currently the top rated infrastructure as service provider on G2. Very impressive. Linode also has an extensive marketplace of fully configured one click apps for whatever use case you need Linux based web servers for. Be it WordPress development, file hosting, database management, video hosting, or even games servers, Linode has you covered. Other than that, if you have a heavy computational load, Linode is an affordable and easily scalable option. Linode is also in the process of implementing Google Pay, which will make your monthly payments more seamless. If all of this sounds good to you, sign up to Linode using the link in my description below to get a $100 60-day credit. Oh, I was always under the impression that 11 inches was huge, but this box kind of says otherwise. Now, this specific little Chromebook that we're looking at today is an Acer variant, although you do get them in all kinds of OEM flavors. Ooh, ooh, double boxed, fancy. Nice, we've got some penguin-friendly cardboard and... Um, they, they still wrapped this stuff in plastic. But other than that, there is uh, pretty much nothing else in here aside from the laptop and a starter manual. Now this tiny little Acer Chromebook has a Celeron N4000 in it with a truly unprecedented four gigs of RAM. It also has 64 gigs of eMMC storage, which means that it's probably soldered onto the motherboard, but we'll have, we'll have a closer look at that when we open up the laptop. And as is implied by the name, this does have Chrome OS on it as opposed to Windows. And quite embarrassingly, I've actually not used a Chrome OS device before, so this little notebook is breaking my Chromebook virginity. Oh, that very much does not pass the one-handed open test. Let's just kind of do that. Ooh, it's a different color on the inside. As I mentioned in the intro, the display is 11.6 inch and apparently it's an Acer comfy view display, which I'm, I'm very excited to have it caress my eyeballs. Oh, the keyboard is definitely nothing special, but it's actually better than I was expecting and for typing emails and stuff, it should be fine. The trackpad is a pretty terrible material. It doesn't feel great to run your finger over, but it is a nice size, so it should be usable. Plastics are relatively solid. It's not too bendy. The IO is very usable. On the one side, we've got a USB 3 port, a USB 3.1 type C and a Kensington lock. And on the other side, we've got another USB C port. This one's for actually charging the device and then we've got another USB 3 port with a micro SD card slot and a microphone headphone jack. I guess now is a good time to have a look at its undercarriage. This is always the thing that kind of surprises me about these little Celeron based laptops is that they never have any ventilation on them and it's because they don't need it. These little Celerons are so low power, you can pretty much cool them just with some gentle words of encouragement. So I'm interested to see what kind of heatsink assembly they have under here. In terms of battery, we have a 3,482 milliamp hour unit, which combined with the very low power Celeron in here means you should get a very good battery life. The speakers fire straight down into the table, which immediately destroys any hope that they're not gonna sound like a punctured larynx. Now at this at this point, disassembly is pretty straightforward. As you can see, it kind of wants to take itself apart. The battery just kind of slips out like that. On either side, you have the speakers, like I mentioned earlier, which 
again, even they just kind of want to slip out of place like that. But uh, let's start screwing things and see if we can flip this motherboard around. It's crazy how pretty much every one of these ribbon cables has a different mechanism to release them. If this is your first rodeo with ribbon cables, you'll probably break something. Ooh, it's so cute and tiny. It looks like the inside of a tablet. So it's just got this little pad that interfaces between the Celeron and this teeny bit of copper under this kind of jelly-like thermal pad. We have the Celeron. So cute with its memory modules up here. And then this module down here seems to be the actual storage. So that's the 64 gigs of EMCC storage. Again, as you can see, none of this stuff is upgradable at all. Ooh, I don't like that. This thermal solution is fascinating because it's essentially just a little sheet of copper. So I'm assuming at this point that this little copper sheet just spans the rest of this and it's just used to interface with this kind of like metal backplate, which could be aluminium. Now the last thing that I want to check out here is uh, what's going on with these two screws. So let's see. So you can see that we've actually detached the trackpad there, which means the only easily replaceable part of this entire laptop is the trackpad for some reason. So with that, let's see what kind of gaming experience we get from this glorified tablet. Ooh, it looks so chromey. Oh, wow, I hate this trackpad already. Let's switch over to a mouse. Now, considering that this is a Chromebook, it does somewhat limit our options in terms of gaming. Option number one is play stuff that we find on the Google Play Store, like Raid Shadow Legends. But considering that I don't feel like developing a gambling addiction today, let's swiftly move over to option number two. Option number two is we use a game streaming service like GeForce Now. Basically how that works is the game is actually run on Nvidia's B cake servers in the cloud and then we just use the little Chromebook as a vessel for the gameplay. Uh, there may be some latency involved depending on the actual connection speed or whatever but yeah let, let's try that out. Now considering that we are using a Chromebook uh, we don't actually have an app that we download for GeForce now we can just do it in the browser. Hey look at that starting off strong with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We're gonna run this at the native resolution 1366 by 768. It seems like it's a mixture between between medium and high here. As you can see down here, our little Chromebook's been possessed by beast hardware. Five minutes later. Okay, the loading times are, are, are a bit atrocious. There's, there's a bit of input lag. It, it doesn't feel great. The movement feels really weird because there's like an inconsistency to how it responds to your inputs. I think the problem is more desync than it is input lag. Ooh. Although we can still smack down on some wolf here. Bear in mind, we are gaming over Wi-Fi here. We do have a perfect signal, but it's still not a wired connection. So I'll play for a bit more, and then I'll try out a USB to Ethernet dongle to see if that helps out at all. But despite the fact that it feels quite desynky and the, and the movement feels pretty unnatural, it does look spectacular and it's running well, like we've, we've, we've had a consistent 60 frames per second the whole time I've been playing. Although, before I plug it into Ethernet, let's try a different game and see, see how it feels. I feel like Fortnite makes sense to try next, right? Oh, okay, it's actually running at a 1080p, which means it's gonna downsample it. No, let's just try the auto settings and see how it, uh, how it behaves. Why does the music sound like I'm about to get sodomized by Elma? I don't know what mood they're trying to go for here in Fortnite at the moment. Let's see if we can go find some cheeks to clap. I don't know if that's Fortnite specific terminology or not. <laughs> what was that guy doing? There we go. Wow, that guy's not very good. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm clearly playing at a, at a very low level of matchmaking here. I'm... 
honestly pleasantly surprised by how playable all of this is. This is not the kind of thing you can use if you're playing at like a high level of Fortnite or, or a CSGO or whatever. But if you're like a casual player who's like starting out and trying to just play some Fortnite with your friends, this, this is a usable option. There we go, nothing like some land boating. Come on. Oh, where did you come from? Um, but anyway, look at that. We came fifth and we weren't even using wired internet. So that's that's pretty crazy. Uh, again, this is at a very low level, but wh whatever. Now we've got some wired internet hooked up. There's definitely still a bit of stutter and input lag going on, but it, it does feel better. So I would recommend if you if you do want to play a bunch of Fortnite using this kind of configuration, I definitely recommend getting one of these like USB to ethernet dongles. Oh, it's Pumba. Leave me alone, Pumba, please. Another thing that I would also recommend is if, if you do have a device like this, Try and get an external monitor because 11 inch is not great for gaming. Uh, it doesn't have a physical HDMI port, but it does have USB-C. So you should be able to plug an external USB-C monitor in here, uh, which would make a big difference. Hey, you made that so easy. You built cover and then ran out from behind it. Why would you do that? What were you doing? But with that awesome proof of concept, let's install some windows on here so that we can run games physically on the baby potato hardware in this device uh, without it being just Raid Shadow Legends off the Play Store. Now I'm gonna stop you right there, David, because unfortunately you can't install Windows on this Chromebook. You can on some Chromebooks, although they do make you jump through some hoops to do that. In a lot of cases, you have to remove a right protect on the device, which is often physical in the form of like removing a screw or it's software based, but either way, it voids the warranty of the device in most cases. However, with this specific Chromebook, you don't even have the option to void your warranty to install Windows on it. Luckily, I do have another Windows based device that's very similarly spec'd so that I can give you an indication of what kind of gaming experience you should expect with the physical hardware in the device, which means that Chewy makes a triumphant return to the channel. Whoa, Half-Life 2 at 720p low settings, and this is the performance we get? Okay, maybe, maybe I'm not that worried about the fact that we couldn't install Windows on it. 